In this video, we're going to talk about fruits and vegetables, primarily fresh. Um, I have some colleagues here, Maggie with Food Corps, and uh, my fellow school person, uh, Paige. Uh, and we're going to just talk about uh, a recipe that we're going to compile. It's a uh, roasted fish uh, slaw wrap. So it's a roasted crispy fish slaw wrap. So our goal is to, to cut some vegetables in different ways. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, the equipment that we're using. We're using a cook's knife or chef's knife. This is a 10 inch blade. Uh, the blade is perfect for me and my size hand. They do come in 8 inch, 6 inch, so I recommend you shopping for ideal for your size. Uh, I like the 10 inch because it works well for me. I'm going to uh, chiffonade some greens for the wrap and we're going to sh shred or chiffonade some cabbage to make like a coleslaw salad mix. Uh, so we're going to begin by, uh, by cleaning off some, some kale, if you could join me Maggie. We're going to, to clean kale, this is nicely washed, but we're going to pull it gently and feel the torque that the stem needs to not break off. So when we clean kale, that's how we do it. Um, it's, it's a faster way of cleaning such a nice grocery. Uh, so we're getting a pile ready here. The reason we're starting with the kale is we're going to chiffonade it, which is a fine julienne or like a shred. Um, and we're going to get it into the bowl and uh, Paige is going to do a massage of the kale that will sweeten it a bit with a little bit of oil. She's just going to kind of give it a massage, kind of like kneading bread. To, to break up some of the nutrients in there to create a, a less bitter, bitter kale. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to compost our stems. Um, so perfect. We've got our kale quickly done. Um, to chiffonade, you're going to grab a handful that's comfortable. You're going to use the tip of the knife on the board and you're going to do a rocking back and forth motion. Okay, and we always use the claw. We curl the fingertips in. And we try to keep the knife in the same location. Uh, and then uh, I regroup to consider my posture with the board. Am I square with the board? How am I using the knife? Am I rocking consistently? Um, that, that is key for a, a safe way to use a knife. Um, so we're going to chiffonade all the kale. And sometimes I will even shift my body so my knife stays in that same location. So I'll almost go down like a, just to line myself up. So my eyes are perfectly above the knife blade. So Paige is going to place the kale in the bowl. Perfect. And she's going to start that massaging technique to help sweeten the, the uh, kale. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to take the spinach. We clean the spinach in the same way the kale is, if it's large spinach leaves, we'll pull the stem off gently so that we don't take a lot of the stem with the green. Our recipe is from the USDA Healthy School Recipe website. Um, the recipe calls for bok choy and different greens like that, but we decided to use a nice local spinach, uh, the kale, and uh, some cabbage that is on the recipe itself. So we like to substitute greens if we need to. using the claw technique. And now the cabbage, that's a little more uh, dangerous because of the density of the cabbage. 
So with that, I am going to try to make a flat side immediately with a softer side. Rather than cutting through the whole cabbage, I'm going to cut through an edge and therefore it won't roll around as much. It gives me a little more safety for what I'm going to do next or choose to do next. So before I start with this, I'm going to get this piece of cabbage out of the way. I'm going to shred it. Uh, there is a lot of equipment for us nowadays with the robo coops and things like that. But if we're a small school, we want to hone our skills so that we could do enough for 20, 30 kids. So uh, using knife skills is very important. Um, let's see, so now our cabbage has a flat edge. It's still a little wobbly, so I'm going to decide to make another cut that's a little more safe. I haven't touched the core yet, so it's all usable product. I've got the claw technique. I'm watching. I'm, my eyes are over the blade. I have good posture. Now I'm going to decide to safely put my palm on the tip of the knife and push down making sure I have a flat hand so my fingertips don't get in. And you can see how challenging that can be when you're cutting something that dense. I'll look at the core. I'm not going to really go for the core yet. I'm going to still break down slabs of this, just like uh, you know, some other uh, thought of cutting a big piece of firewood or something like that. You want to start from the outside. So my fingers are using, my knuckles are the backstop of the knife. I'm keeping the tip on the board at all times. I don't want to raise the knife. That creates a more dangerous situation. I think that's plenty of cabbage for this purpose, of the white cabbage. We're going to use the same technique on the uh, red cabbage. Again, we're using the green cutting board for food safety. We're keeping uh, food separated for uh, cross-contamination purposes. Uh, we do use uh, the blue cutting board for any cooked proteins, animal proteins in particular. Um, so any cooked foods, we'll use the blue. For the green, we'll use raw vegetables and fruit. Uh, so again, we're going to start by making a flat surface on the cabbage so it does not roll around. We're going to use just a little bit of red for the purpose of color contrast uh, to make a nice looking wrap. So again, we're keeping the tip and the first one or two inches of the knife on the board, rocking back and forth in short motions uh, with the same pressure. So when you're using a knife, you're going to want to use the same energy throughout the whole cutting process. Um, if your energy changes, that creates another safety hazard. So notice we're, we're, we don't need to clean the board after every vegetable. Uh, it isn't a cross-contamination situation. It is if we go right into fruit. So we're going to stick with vegetables right now uh, before we uh, clean up our station. Uh, so for a carrot, we're going to peel the carrot using a peeler. Uh, all our produce, particularly the greens and the carrots, came from Emery's Farm in Wayne, Maine. Uh, we like to buy things from our, our local farmers. Um, so again, you, when you're peeling, we like to use the traditional peeler, and we use both sides, both directions, to create a more efficient approach uh, with the carrot. Uh, when I am getting ready to cut the carrot, we're going to cut it into a classic julienne. Um, the julienne is a two inch, it's, it's an eighth of an inch thick and two inches long. So I'm going to attempt to make uh, a perfect julienne. Uh, first I'm going to remove, I have the tip of the blade on the board. I'm going to remove both tips. I'm going to try to minimize the size of the tips so that I'm using as much of the product as possible. 
I'm going to cut two inch lengths. There's probably two of them here. So I'm going to attempt to make them the same length. At that point, I'm going to make a flat side. on each of the round carrots. So now the carrots won't roll around as much. The fact that the carrot is smaller than the cabbage or other items, you, it's, it's very difficult to get a good grip on the carrot. Again, you're always going to want to use the claw technique. This is where maybe your pinky or your thumb sort of moves into a a hazardous place. So attempt to keep it square. Make some one-eighth slices. And here we're getting a little tricky. So you want to make them as thin as possible. What I'm trying not to do is lift the knife higher than necessary. So keep it only as high as the food that you're cutting. I'll take two or three stack, two or three slices, and then I'll cut again about the same thickness. So that's creating the julienne or the matchstick approach in the event you don't have a traditional shredder um, or if your student population is small. Trying to make them the same size. And again, my knife, when I begin and when I end, is always facing the same way. You may customize your own approach and turn a little bit. But as you train, make sure you're always aware of the direction of that blade. You'll keep yourself safe. My technique is square. Now we're going to revert back to our recipe. We've got many of the products in there. We've got uh, the cabbage, the carrot, the greens. We're going to finish with some more flavored items, some fresh cilantro, the avocado, and some dressing, which is going to be balsamic, olive oil, and lime juice. Uh, and then we'll assemble the wrap. So let's get moving on that. We'll chiffonade. We're using the same technique. We're using a good posture. We're square with our board. Again, the green cutting board. We're going to get the claw technique, using the knuckles as the backboard. The tip of the blade is on the, on the cutting board, and we're going back and forth with the same energy on each cut. We're aware that we're not slipping or changing our velocity of the speed of the knife. Uh, so there's some cilantro. For the avocado, I've seen many people use the knife like this. However, for safety, we're going to use a smaller knife. We're going to trace the avocado, open it up. And you can use that technique. You'll see some more advanced chefs use the large knife in that same fashion. Um, for this purpose, you can use a spoon to scoop it out, which is most ideal. We're going to peel it. And try not to bruise it. It's a nice, firm avocado. Make sure we get all the peel off. And now we're going to keep the avocado separate with some very small slices that are about a quarter inch. And we're going to reserve this avocado. You're going to cut that at the last moment just before you make the wrap. Now we're going to make the dressing into the salad. We'll fill some of the tortilla and cut the fish. Each filet is about five ounces, which will give us 
two portions each, so the two fillets, the tails, we choose tails is because it's more affordable. We'll buy a local main product that is much cheaper if we order the tail by the case. Um, so it's a nice way to, to use local product that way. So now we're gonna talk about cutting the salmon for the wrap. We've baked the salmon. Uh, notice that we also have the tail of the salmon. It's a much cheaper cut. So we buy by the case uh, the salmon tail. Um, we're gonna remove it from the parchment paper. We kept the skin on. We'll peel the skin off. The skin is, is a good um, product to keep on the filet so that it keeps the fish from drying out while you're baking. So we'll remove the paper and the salmon skin. So we're cutting the salmon in half making sure the tip of the blade remains on the board and we're dragging it gently across. We'll do the same to the other filet so that we have a consistent cut and a consistent portion for each wrap. And again, we're using the blue cutting board for the animal proteins so that we can omit cross-contamination. Uh, and now we'll begin uh, making the wrap we're going to use a whole wheat tortilla. We're gonna measure the first few just to get a good rhythm. We'll use a cup of the green mix, the slaw mix. It looks like it's a rather large amount, but if you do these a few minutes ahead during for the lunch period, this is gonna compress. It's gonna saturate, it's gonna shrink. So it's good to have a lot. Place the two and a half ounces of salmon. You can use, this is one whole avocado that we sliced. So for each, we're gonna use at least three slices, depending on how thick. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I could use at least three, let's use, yeah, let's use three. And then for this technique, it's a very full wrap. Fold in the edges, using your fingertips to tuck and roll. So for your final presentation, uh, these are quite full and that does provide uh, great customer satisfaction. So uh, at that point, uh, school lunch is very busy. Um, so you, when you serve them, you wanna, wanna grab them tight. Uh, and you could cut them at, a, at an angle if you choose. And you could serve them just like that on the tray, if you wish. So with this video, we're gonna talk about finalizing the plate presentation. Uh, we're gonna, we've decided to do some cantaloupe to go as a garnish with the wrap. Uh, we want to try to cut the cantaloupe as nicely as possible. With regard to safety, we're using the green cutting board. We're going to use the utility knife that has a flexible blade. Um, we're going to take the two ends off the pre-washed cantaloupe. Um, we're checking for quality as well at this point. This cantaloupe is, is a little soft, which is okay. Uh, versus hard, um, so it's relatively fresh. Um, so again, we, we cut the two ends off, we have a flat surface so it doesn't roll around. Now we're gonna consider our posture. We're gonna slice the peel off by rotating it and keeping our blade in the same direction. I'm not so worried about getting all of the peel in the first approach. I just want to make sure I get all the peel that I can see looking downward. Then I'm going to flip it over and see the areas that I missed. I'm gently pushing away with the blade, trying to feel the roundness of the cantaloupe. Then I will slice the in half, 
exposing the seeds. Here is where I can either bruise the fruit, which would, if I'm using it for tomorrow, it, it will make the fruit a little less eye appealing. So I'm gonna be gentle. I'm gonna use this ice cream scoop. It's a little large from, for the size of this cantaloupe, but try not to cut the inside with the spoon or the vessel that you're using to remove the seed. Be as gentle as you can. So now I want to make at least a half a cup of sliced fruit for garnish. I'm using the blade, I'm making sure the tip is on the board, and I'm dragging the blade across, trying to make consistent cuts. If I want to use the whole slice, I could cut it like that. Three or four would be the size of a half a cup. I could make them smaller by cutting the cantaloupe in half, as you see. And then being consistent, my posture is good. And at the end, it tends to be a little more challenging to get those same cuts. If I was gonna flatten it, I would hold my hand out. And that could give you another look if you chose. So with the final presentation of our crispy salmon wrap, I have the cantaloupe on the plates, and now I'm gonna cut and place the wrap right on the plate for our final presentation. It's a wrap, literally. <laughs>